Hi everyone, I'm driving home from my four day vacation and it didn't go as planned, but I always go with the flow and I don't let anything upset me because that's life. So I was packed for four days to go to a cabin in West Virginia and I was told we can't go because uh, evidently my brother had, been, had checked out the cabin, which I've stayed there many, many, many times. It's a wonderful place near Berkeley Springs. And there was a dead mouse, maybe several, because when you have a cabin and you're in the woods, this is, this is just nature. You're going to have mice, okay? I look like hell, I know. Um, so, they tried to eradicate it, and uh, my, I know my brother pulled out all the appliances, Clorox to clean it, and I don't know if they found all of them, but I remember when I lived at the broccoli farm in Westmoreland County, I was in the woods, on a 200 acre broccoli farm, right? Sometimes it was squash and corn, depending on the season. And I had mice all the time. It was a constant job just setting the traps. Oh, believe me, I've had to do a lot since I've been single. Oh my God. Now I'm in Fredericksburg, get ready to get on round three. And they used to call that the cow path, right? So forgive me if I'm not looking at the camera because I'm driving. Okay. So the part about going on vacation is I got to load usually my own suitcases and that kind of wears my back out when I do it. So we decided just to hang around my brother's house, uh, which is right next to the Manassas battlefield. Actually, he lives a off of Dumfries Road. And uh, the famous Ma Manassas Fair is like right maybe two miles from this house. So we just hung around the house and there was a lot of drama, a lot of children. And I love children. I'm very close to my brother's children and grandchildren. And my mother and I, we used to keep my brother's children a lot when they were growing up. So I'm very close to all of them. And so we had a whole house full of children, which was uh, a little noisy, but I, uh, and like I said, I just love children. And uh, let's see, I got to go out to eat. We went out, we went out to eat on July 4th. Of course, half the restaurants are closed. So we end up at Logan's, which is, famous for their peanuts, but they don't have peanuts anymore. I don't get this. So that was disappointing. So the funny thing is there was a, a guy that has worked with my son and my brother many, many years ago. He's been living in Florida. So he's like living in his car and homeless. And, um, so my brother and my nephew and, you know, said, why don't you come up? So he went to the cabin with my brother to check out this mouse situation. I should say mice. And he lost his keys and his wallet. Okay. So after my brother drove him all the way back to Manassas, he has to get in a car and go all the way back to check everything at the cabin. There was nothing there. He did, he did not have it there. So me and my niece are sitting on the couch saying he needs to retrace his steps. Now this is what you should do when you lose something. I even have a note on my front door saying, do you have your hearing aid? Do you have your wallet? Do you have your keys? Because nothing is more frustrating. Nothing is more frustrating than losing your keys. So while he was driving somebody else's car, back to Berkeley Springs to look for his keys. He doesn't, can't, we can't get in his car and we're thinking maybe it's in his car. So my nephew go gets a blood pressure cuff and I am like real confused. And then 
I see it hanging out of this guy's door. I don't want to mention his name for privacy, but we'll call him Rick. Okay. So they put the blood pressure cuff somehow. I don't know how they did it. I, I missed that part. But then my brother is going to get his fishing poles and I'm going like, what the hell? What do you need fishing poles are with, you know? So my brother's a big fisher person. Okay. So I'm seeing my nephew putting the fishing pole down and he's trying to pop the lock. He, he gets it open like this much. This went on for about an hour with no luck. It just wasn't working. Next thing we know, because they opened up the window, the car alarm goes off. So now it's going off and I know the neighbors are cussing. I'm, I'm, I'm now getting a little anxiety, right? So they had to pop the hood and um, unhook, I guess, some, the main power, I don't know, to stop this alarm. So then I'm looking at my little grandniece, who's very slender, and I said, why don't we get her to put her hand in the window just to pop the lock? Well, we both lifted her up, and she sticks her hand in and pops the lock. But the keys were not in there. So we're, like, trying to tell him to retrace his steps. Now, my brother had taken Rick to the Waffle House. My brother's a big breakfast person. Okay. So, uh, someone actually starts using their head and call the Waffle House. I think my brother did. Talks to the manager. And they go, yeah, we found it in the bathroom. So, now we got to tell this guy to go to the Waffle House to pick up his license. Now on the way back, he gets lost. He, evidently, he did not know how to use GPS. This guy is from, Hon I guess, Honduras. Everybody thinks he can speak Spanish, but his mother adopted him as a child and she uh, worked for the county, I think, in the school system. So this guy knows no Spanish, even though he looks like that. You know, he looks, you know, Hispanic, but he doesn't know a lick of Spanish. So he goes and he gets his license and he comes back and he gets lost on the way back. He ends up in Bristow. So then my nephew has to go and round him up. Now this guy has got to be in his mid-40s and I'm just shocked that he doesn't know how to load an address on a GPS. I don't know. That is just very crucial in this day and time because the roads in Northern Virginia, they, they, they change constantly because of all of the people that are inhabiting Northern Virginia. So they have to go round him up in the middle of the night. So then we got to try to find a place for him to sleep. So in the middle of the night, my brother's wife has to go to Walmart to get a blow up mattress. Now she has a huge house uh, for him to sleep on. So this was a, very chaotic. And my brother's wife got a migraine and I started getting one and uh, it was not good. <laughs> it's not good. But this is, this is, my brother owns a, a big business and um, he helped tile the MGM Grand, if you know where that is. I think it's DC somewhere. I, I don't know. I know it's crossed a really big bridge. But my brother, if you own your own company, you're used to employees or past employees trying to look you up when, when they want to get back into the working working force so you always have drama because I remember when I owned my tree company there was many times I would dry out or I shouldn't say I but my ex would dry out employees on our couch uh, for various reasons and I always called it the stray dog syndrome but when you own your own business sometimes you have to do that but I don't recommend it because it disrupts the whole household really don't want to do that. 
But if this guy was homeless, living in his car, and uh, but after spending a couple days with this guy, we realized that he's not, he doesn't have everything. The fact that he kept getting lost over and over again is not a good thing. In this day and time, you better the hell learn how to use a GPS. I don't care who you are, where you're going to be lost. And I remember my ex always saying, you can't get lost with a GPS. You might get rerouted for a couple miles, but then you'll, you'll figure it out and then you'll fix yourself. So, so this was my 4th of July, but I did get to go to a couple nice restaurants. Now this guy was so hungry that I gave him, because I don't eat so much anymore, I gave him my leftover dinner. I felt so sorry for him. Um, so as you all know, I'm taking pharmacology. So he had brought, you know, those cheap noodles, this guy Rick. And it's like 1130 at night. My brother and I are finishing up a really good movie um, called Greeters about the Razorbacks. It was an excellent movie. I suggest it. My, bro my, my son is a movie nut. He can recall every movie he's ever watched with the plot and the major stars, which I find like, it's like Rain Man, right? Um, so we're watching this movie and he is starving. So one night I gave him my leftovers. And then the next night he's, he got into his noodles and I said, well, you know, I'll get a pan and fix it for you. It's like 11, 11.30 at night. He says, well, we need 300 millil milliliters. He said liters, but you don't... 300 liters is not correct. You know, because if you look at a bottle of booze, that's like a liter. So it, it, he meant 300 milliliters. So I got into my pharmacology book and figured it out. Like uh, 30 milliliters is one teaspoon. So I was able to figure out how much water he needed for these daggone noodles. So I realized that I can use the pharmacology to help prepare this guy's noodles at 11.30 at night. But he was just famished. But that I think the moral of the story is some people you can help a little bit. But if they don't start helping themselves, it's a lost cause. You're wasting your time. And I know the Christian thing to do is to help the downtrod, right? But there comes a time where they disrupt your life too much and they are just a lost cause. You know, some of them need to go in the hospital. Some of them need to get evaluated psychiatrically. But um, it comes a time where if the person you're helping is not trying to better themselves, it's time to walk away, and I know a lot of people are going to say, no, no, you don't do that, yeah, sometimes you have to, I'm sorry, you do, I lived my whole life helping others, and I remember uh, when I first started the tree company, a lot of the young guys couldn't pay their electric bill, and I would pay their electric bill, and they quit the next day, you see, you see what I'm trying to say here, <laughs> a lot of people will just screw you, and, um, yeah, you should never do that. If someone is helping you, you should make the effort to pay back the loan or whatever. But that's not always the case, now, is it? So, hope you enjoyed this little story. And, uh, happy 4th, everyone. <laughs>